money real. gives optionality. It gives choices. It gives, I don't have to work on the weekends. I can spend time with my family. I can decide what school I send them to. I can decide what zip code I live in. I can decide the quality of education or food that we're able to get. It's all about the money. So if you want to get more money, how do you get the money without really changing much? It's what is the opportunity vehicle that you're in? Tech Journey family, what's up? I don't even think that we need much of an introduction. We definitely have the honor to be here with Mr. Trent Dressel. Uh, look, I had a chance to talk to Trent probably for about five minutes or less before we started. It wasn't a lot of talking. We wanted to get straight into it. Trent has voiced to me that he came to add value uh, to the community, to the channel. And listen, my hope is that on the other end of you viewing this video that you feel empowered and not only empowered, but that you literally feel like you can take applicable things that you receive today and go and produce real and tangible fruit in your life. So without further ado, I want Trent to speak to us, introduce yourself, tell us whatever you want to say in the beginning, Trent. Oh man, what well positioned, Justin. I love that. It's great to be with you here today. I'm on a journey every day in my life. And today we happen to be in the tech journey specifically. So let's take the listener right now, whoever you are, wherever you may be watching, however you may be listening, we're going to take you on a journey here today. And like Justin said, we're here to deliver value, but we're also here to entertain as well. We're going to have fun. You got the tree behind you, Justin. So <laughs> my name is Trent and I'm on a tech journey. I'm about five years into my software sales career. Started as a sales development representative. Worked my way up at the same company, 60,000 cold calls and counting. We just hammered, hammered a Friday afternoon cold calling session right now, Justin. I was sending off some email. Justin's like, hey, we're about to go live. We got to talk to the people. I'm like, Justin, I got to send a few prospecting emails. He's like, I'll get my audio ready to go. So we're, we're live in the studio. We're on the journey. Come on, man. So yeah, so I walked in the room and I told Atia, if you're new to the channel, my wife, uh, and I was like, yeah, so Trent, let me know. You know, it was like, give him five minutes. He's finishing up some prospecting. Mm. And then me and the teachers looked at each other and laughed. We was like, yeah, based on what we've watched on Trent, that's definitely Trent. But I was you, cool with it because I had to get some stuff together anyway. So You know, people see these things, Justin, they think I'm kidding. They right. think I'm kidding. We're about this life. We're sending right. emails. We're making calls. It's as simple as that. Who has the money? Where? Who has the most money? The counts make the most money. Okay, who has my money in those accounts? The buyer persona. Let me reach out to them. What do they want? What problems do they have? Okay, I can solve that. Give me your money. I'll give you the solution. Pipeline, revenue, success, quotas. That's the game. Trent, tell us a little bit more about like your accomplishments, so to speak in tech because i watch you before the person who don't watch you and and i just want to put this out there real quick for for my family who's watching i literally watched two people when it came to cold calling when my wife and i decided to break in tech only two you were one of them okay and um and i felt like what you had it came across as something that was genuine and it was real and you was just wired in a way that I admired of being wired. And I still think about this to this day, Trent. You was walking around with these headsets on, and then you was like, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep, you was like, I like to keep my headset on just in case I wanna just start making cold calls. <laughs> and I was like, this guy like really makes cold calls cool. <laughs> I was like, that is like odd, but I like that. I li So I couldn't wait, Trent, I was like, I want to become oh, an SDR man. so I can have this headset with this mic on so that I can make cold calls look cool too. Tell us more a little bit about your background, man. Man, I'm sometimes laying in bed with the headset on just wired in, getting that itch. I'm like, I got to start making some dials right now. But, you know, early on when I first started, Justin, they handed me a headset and they I didn't know what I'd be doing as a sales development rep. They handed me a headset. They said, you'd be calling. So I asked everyone around me, I said, who, who am I calling? What am I going to say? I was worried about it. I was I was doing all the prep work. I was looking at the LinkedIn, the company website. 
the Salesforce page. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta understand what I'm gonna say. And then, and then the lady next to me, who was my colleague, she had been there about a year. She's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm prepping." She's like, "That's the biggest mistake you can make. Press call and figure out what to say while it's ringing." So I just started relentlessly making calls. My mentor at the time, he said, "Trent, cold calling is never going away." So the mm -hmm. more I promote, the more successful I become. The more I cold call. But now I realize not every cold call is created equally. You got to be calling the right people who are qualified to buy, that have real money, real problems, at real companies that you have a real solution that can solve. So I call, I set up meetings, and I've managed to promote a few times. I've drastically increased my income as an employee. Definitely not ballooned it yet because we're still we're still W two, but. <laughs> it's it's been a fun ride and i think the message resonates and i appreciate you sharing that that you watch me because i'm in the trenches i'm still doing it i got that i mean i just finished cold calling it's not like i'm not doing it and i i, I am telling people what i do and i don't get paid for my face although it's a nice face i don't get paid for my jokes my personality it's because i show up and anyone that's watching this is capable of showing up doing research, figuring out who can you call and calling them. And it's all about communication. At the end of the day, it's all about what, what ideas do you have? How can you help other people? A relationship with a partner in life, a friend, a family member, a customer, it's all an exchange of value. So what do you have to offer? And the more you can give, the more you're going to get back in return. So I'm not trying to take selfishly. It's all about giving and, and, and trying to create value. So that's what we do every day. We show up and we try and give value. Yeah, no, nah, that's good, Trent. I want to jump straight to this just for you to answer really quickly at this segment in the video. How many times were you promoted? What is your current position in tech? And if you don't mind sharing, what is your income? And then we're going to roll over into some other things. Yeah, yeah. I just made a video on this. So so I think it's important to share for transparency. I'm not here to, to brag boast, but when I first started in tech sales, I made 50,000 year one as a sales development rep. Last year at 26, I made 300,000 as an account executive. So you can see that's six X my income. I made a video publicly sharing my W2 from 2019 to 2022. And I, I got an email from my payroll team two weeks ago and they said, Trent, your, your, your taxes are ready. I pulled it up and it said 302,000. And I said, that's more than I thought I was going to make because I'm not worried about what I'm making. I'm just worried about the inputs. It's all about the inputs, which is the calls showing up every day. Dude, that's why I said, I want to speak to Justin, talk about the tech journey, but I need to do my inputs. I said, mm -hmm. I committed to myself. I'm going to send 10 emails today. So I started, I pulled up TikTok and I was wasting time. I was like, I know I'm speaking with Justin in 20 minutes. I was watching TikTok. And then, and then I said, you know what? I'm going to send some emails. So I, I needed to send my email. So if you want the outputs, you've got to focus on the inputs. And the reason why I'm qualified to talk about tech is because I have the receipts to show what has been done. I'm not here to talk about what could happen. It's this is what I'm doing. I'm not saying how to do things because I'm not an expert. I'm just starting but I'm talking about how I'm doing things and clearly it's working. Yeah, no, that's good. And look, and I only brought up like the whole income thing just to give the framework of the authority that you're speaking from. That's all. Um, like, where does that mindset come from? Like you're, you're understanding that it is about sticking to the plan, executing the plan all the way through every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year. I mean, it's hard enough to commit to something like as strenuous as the role of an SDR um, for a week, like for a month. But for you to do this like for years consecutive, like when did that when did that mindset click? And I'm just personally curious, like, was this a part of like your childhood, your upbringing? Um, when did this take place? It's it's a good question, Justin. And it's it's only hard if you make it hard. It depends on the label you give it. So a lot of people will say, Trent you're a work addict, you like to work, you have no work-life balance, when that may just be their own rationale to justify why they are not working hard enough themselves. So think about what is the label? So if you're willing to work longer and harder than the person next to you, when you are competing for the same set of resources that they want, it's all about 
resource aggregation. So the more successful you are, the more resources you get. So you start to say, okay, what are my inputs? What do I need to do to be successful? And I grew up, Justin, mowing lawns, washing dishes, I babysat for two. I never had an internship. I babysat for two summers because I thought, hey, I can make cash and it's going to be easy. I played a lot of video games. I worked in warehouses. So I know what manual labor is like, but I love sitting at a desk doing a knowledge job. And I think it's, um, I think a lot of people think it's work, but they lose sight that, hey, we're pretty lucky to be able to do in this. I mean, we, we could be out outside in the sun working, working with our hands. A lot of people are doing that. We're working with our minds and we can do this forever. And I've always been wired to maximize my potential. And to answer your question directly, it's out of survival. I believe success is imperative for survival. And in order for me to feel good, I need to be successful. I don't attribute my status from how much money I make, or I don't feel like, hey, th this is what I'm trying to signal to the world, but I feel better when I'm being more successful and working hard to me is survival. Because think about an organism. We are, we are made to grow. When you're a baby, you grow up and get bigger. If you look at a tree, they want to eventually get bigger. The best companies, they're growing or they're dying. So you as a person, you're either growing, expanding, evolving, getting better, or you're getting worse. There's no staying the same. So I look at it every day where it's, it's a matter of survival to my success. And I'm, I'm just focused on getting better. I'm just focused on the inputs and, and, and maximizing my potential. And it's an infinite pursuit. And it's something that, that it's a, it's a daily challenge. Yeah. Now nah, you said a mouthful and look, tech family, whatever value you get and drop a comment. Um, what I what comment like, the fire I, emoji for Justin. Comment the fire uh, emoji for uh, Justin hey, look, or the hey, look, tree. Yeah. We're talking about trees. He's got trees. <laughs> comment us a fire emoji or a tree or maybe both. Come oh man, look, I, I should have got a tear for this interview with you, Trent. Look, the people if anybody subscribes to the channel, they know my wife, she's like way more like lit than I am. I'm oh, like man, you're pretty lit. I'm me. like that's just You're like pretty lit to me, but people are going to start wildfires down there in the comments. So it's going to be lit Come comments on. and this lit conversation. Oh, no, nah, man. This is this is so valuable. And from what it seems like I heard was gratitude. Like, because you made that correlation of like, okay, we're not out there working in the heat with our hands. And you actually just put a reminder for me. Because when I first, like, literally first, I mean, I just started working like January 9th <clears throat> this year, 2023. Um, and it was gratitude. Like, being able to sit in my room behind a behind a computer i was like wow like how can i not take this job serious um and so anyway that's what i heard and, and to add to that justin that's exactly right and that feeling will wear off that feeling of new job excitement it's gonna wear off and and when those time gets hard a lot of people say i have to go do this i have to go to that appointment when we get to do this we have the free will to choose no one has to do anything unless you're being forced against your will and someone's exerting violence or or hey you can't pay your rent without this money then maybe you have to do it but when you get to a place of i choose what i get to do it creates a lot more excitement and i think operating from that place of i'm grateful for what i have and what i'm doing it allows you to operate from a place of abundance rather than i need to set this meeting i'm worried about getting told no it's you're operating from a place of developing and expanding and it's it's natural and i think what we're it's what we're all programmed to do yeah no that's good that's good um i'm a trans i'm a transition into so if you're watching the video at this moment you wondering what direction we're going in i'm about to ask trent these questions is now a good time to enter into tech we want to get trent dressel's opinion uh senior account executive trent is that the correct title yeah i got all sorts of titles but we'll all use right. that for now now was the best time in history to get into tech and i'll tell you why because if you're able to operate during challenging times think about when the times get good again and when the times are good you want to capitalize when the times are hard we want to get better and it's all about getting better and I think about it where I am committed to being in the tech industry for at least 20 years. I started in 2018. So that means you're going to see me in tech, specifically SaaS, ideally, because that's what I know for the next 16 more years till 2020, 2038. 
So I'm in it for the long haul. So if you're worried about, oh, a little bit of layoffs, interest rates going up, oh, hard to get, people are hiring freezes. If you can't do it now, you're never going to be able to do it. So now's the time to get in and learn when it's hard because those people that make it will then be even better off because of it. <laughs> Tech journey, man. <laughs> Perspective shift. Okay. And coming coming from you, that means that means quite a bit. Again, I'm going to say it again. Age 26, senior account executive. I'm 27 now. But 27 when I, now. Yeah, what was your birthday, Trent? August, August. So I consider 2022 that I was 26 for about eight and a half of the month. So I consider my income that year at 26, but I turned 27 in August. Nice. Well, happy, super belated birthday to you. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Only five minutes late. <laughs> I like it though. It's coming up. No, that's good. So, so Trent, so this course careers. All right. So course careers, it is, it has a tech sales track, a digital marketing track and an information technology track. Um, that is the tech sales course. What my wife and I deemed as our entry point into the tech space when we first started discovering about tech and um and you went from this person that i watched and that i studied on youtube to after i graduated you became the tech sales instructor of this course uh that i really admired and i just found that so cool um my wife and i we became affiliates with of course careers you know we we believe in it we back it and then when you became the instructor i was like whoa this is like crazy i'm like nah i really believe in course careers and that uh, i just really appreciate what troy does with the course so just like curious if you can just like touch on that just for a moment um like why why did you take that role take on that role of being the instructor of course careers like where did that come from um what do you think about course careers in terms of its contribution into allowing people to segue into tech course careers is transformational and that's why i'm involved in it i wouldn't get involved or affiliate with anything i don't truly believe in i'm not here to sell anyone anything i had a podcast i've been i've been making videos for a long time mm -hmm. i had a podcast talking about my tech sales journey and i got connected with troy the founder of course careers great guy he hitchhiked his way homeless from georgia all the way to california and throughout the journey he realized Hey, I need more stability. He got in tech sales without a degree, without experience. And after a few years realized, Hey, I can help people get to six figures without a degree, without experience as well, because I was able to do it. So let's, let's figure it out for other people. So he, he went down this journey and him and I got connected because we were in the same space. He was talking about his stuff. I thought it was pretty cool. About eight months went by and then him and I got back together again. We were talking about it and he said, Hey, I want to take this to the next level. I want to bring in the existing hundreds of hours of research that we put into this material and build on the infrastructure and bring in someone that can make the content more engaging and that can bring in that firsthand experience, someone that's been trained by a top 25 SaaS company, billion dollar recurring revenue, that's been a sales development rep, that got hired with no internships or no connections, no experience, that's promoted to an account executive that actually still does it, that's in the trenches. I don't do it because I need the money. I shared what I make and you can go look it up. I do it because we're helping people. I, of course, get paid to do it because there's real value there. And you can go look at hundreds of student success stories on the website. Folks coming from backgrounds being janitors, folks going to community college and dropping out because it's transformational. And as you think about tech journey, it's the opportunity of a better future ahead. You could go in college and get in debt. You could go to college and still not be guaranteed to get a good job. Or you could be like one of our students that I recently spoke with, Donovan Sproulis, age 18, went through course careers, on track to make $100,000 at 18, 19. Think about that. Ima imagine if you were that age with that trajectory, by the time most normal people following the traditional path in traditional debt and traditionally less valuable degrees, he is now five years ahead of them because he learned and applied himself the specialized information. So Course Careers is a transformation vehicle providing the specialized knowledge of what you need to know behind the scenes so that when you see the position requires experience, requires a degree, you can get past that. And that's what we're helping hundreds, if not thousands of people do today. 
Trent, you are something else to me, man. <laughs> very, very, very well said, sir. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. And then we put together a free intro course, and people are still saying, oh, it's a scam. It's not worth $500. What is the alternative? What is the alternative? Work an hourly job? Okay, no future ahead. Okay, go to college and do whatever. $100,000 in debt. $10,000 for random boot camp doesn't guarantee a job. $500, and you can be on course to make $70,000 within a month. And there's people doing this. It's real. I speak with them weekly. Yeah. And we have a free intro course that I imagine you've linked down below that people can go listen to my face, talk for another hour, and actually tell them specifically why sales development, what you would be doing, and how to get started. Yeah. Why would you not do it? It's because either pe people... It's because they don't want to apply themselves, which could be out of a place of laziness or arrogance, sure. which is okay. And there's and, and that's why it's hard. And that's why most people don't make it. But the people that do apply, you get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. I mean, very well said. I mean, obviously, I can attest to that. Um, I mean, both my wife and I were able to land a job. I mean, you touched on another reminder, Trent, for me. Um, just understanding like when, when my wife and I, when we started this channel, September, 2022, one of the things about it was we wanted to help people change the trajectory of their life. And so is it about the income? Well, partially it's what you said. It's the fact that you can make up for time. And then once you get that amount of income, like what does that create? That creates opportunity for you making more decisions to spend time with your family, to invest in your children. Um, you can save more money. You can invest more money, right? You have more to steward um, that you can just create something, something good for your family. And so that's part of the passion. And that's part of like that interesting, I don't know, that interesting passion when it comes to tech. It's like, am I so passionate about tech? I mean, yeah, but I'm passionate about the opportunities that uh that tech allows for people to really experience and you're right That's money real. gives optionality it gives choices it gives i don't have to work on the weekends i can spend time with my family i can decide what school i send them to i can decide what zip code i live in i can decide the quality of education or food that we're able to get it's all about the money so if you want to get more money how do you get the money without really changing much it's what is the opportunity vehicle that you're in and you don't have to be overly smart to be in tech it's just the right place the right time and be in a performance-based career that's that's the simple adjustment you can't trade time for money you got to be in a performance-based career which is the tech industry or the financial services industry so you're either being an investment banker or a consultant um, engineering coding or tech sales and tech sales you just need to be able to communicate and that's it Anyone can do it. Uh, that's good. So, Trent, I'm going to wrap up after this question and allow you to just offer anything uh, that may be on your heart or on your mind <clears throat> to share. In terms of like, what if someone, so when someone hears this, okay, break into tech, and we know that sales development representative is an entry-level role for tech. Um, from your experience and what you've observed, what other... Um, roles have you seen a person venture into from SDR that wasn't directly in the line of sales, meaning account executive? Some people decide sales isn't for them and that's okay. They don't want the pressure. They don't like the feeling of making those asks to prospects when it feels uncomfortable and that's totally okay. Think about the value chain from finding a new customer and closing the deal. The closer you are to that, the more money you're going to make. So in sales, you're directly, you're near the sun, you're flying close. You have a feeling of burning out. That's why it's so hard. There are additional roles that supplement sales. So think about sales as the sun, all the other roles of the ecosystem around the sales. You could go marketing, you could go customer success. You could become a solution engineer where you just do demos all day. You could transition into finance, which would be kind of weird, but I, that could happen. So there's these different sales supporting roles where you are not directly exchanging the value with the transaction and moving it along. The reason why sales makes the most money is because it's there's the most on the line with the quota and you can directly see how much money are you bringing in. That's why you make the most money. So if you are in a role where it's not directly linked 
to money in, then you are less valuable inherently, and therefore you make less money. So it depends what you want. So I would encourage your audience to think about what do they want. And if you start as a sales development rep, it gives you options, which is nice. You get paid to learn. And that's why it's a nice place to start. You can keep going up the path, leadership, or maybe transition into a different role that has less pressure, but there's less upside. You know, the interesting part about this is no matter what edification I give you right now, you already believe this about yourself, which is what makes you even more intriguing. But you, you're brilliant. Uh, the, the way that you explained that, I personally never had that actual understanding of sales um, in that light. And, and yeah, you just gave me an entirely different perspective. And I really hope that the people who are viewing this video, uh, I hope they watch it to the end. And, and if they're hear me saying that right now, then obviously they've watched it to this point. And Trent, I know you didn't come on the show to promote yourself and it's not a promotion. This is uh, an opportunity for if anyone wants to continue to be enlightened, inspired and have applicable things uh, to their life to benefit them. Obviously, Trent Dressel's links will be in the description for LinkedIn as well as his YouTube channel. Trent, what do you want to leave us with? Tonight, Justin, I'm going to go sit in my sauna for 20 minutes. I don't usually make it that long, but I'm going 20 minutes and then I'm going to get in the, my cold plunge after. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I enjoy it, but it's going to be uncomfortable. And I encourage your audience to think about, are they seeking out discomfort or are they doing what is most comfortable? Meaning sitting on the couch, watching a movie, eating unhealthy, not getting their sleep, not drinking the water, not writing down their goals. Or are they doing what's uncommon, which is the opposite of all those things? And that's what I'm doing. So just know that you're competing against people like me that are willing to do those things. So when you don't have the outcomes that you want in life, making that certain income, now you know why. <laughs> Trey. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Bro. Woo! And I'm a, here's the thing about the journey is, I don't feel like I've started yet. I feel like I'm at day one. There's people making 35 grand that look at me and say, okay, well, he clearly knows something. I look at people making 3.5 mil and I feel like, hey, well, it's it's the natural evolution. So it's all about growth. And that's what I think embodies the tech journey. Tech is the right vehicle to be in. And it's the journey because everyone's on their own unique journey of growth. Trent. I don't need to add much to that, sir. And uh, thank you. Thank you for being a part of the program. And yeah, I will personally be going to uh, probably watch this video. My guess would be more than once. And uh, you brought a lot of value and I'm honored to be in some form of connection with you, Trent. We're on the journey now, Justin. We're connected. Let's go. <laughs> Tech family, thank y'all for joining in on the video. Remember, hit the like, hit the subscribe. We will see you next time.